What's up, y'all? It's Bigger Boy Scotty, and you're watching my review on Love and Hip Hop New York season four, season finale. What is up, y'all? Um, I don't really have much to say. I only have five notes down, and um, this video won't be no more than five or ten minutes. I'm promising you, promising you that it won't be no more than five or ten minutes. So let me just go ahead and get into the video, um, or whatnot. So let me just say this: Love and Hip Hop New York this season, season four. Shit breaks on the season before this, season three. It really does. Like, I mean, season four started out very strong. Um, it really did. I was glued to the TV for more than half of the first half of the season. But you know, as time went on, storylines became redundant, and then you know, it seemed like after we came back from the hiatus from Love and Hip Hop New York, it just seemed like. The show was beginning to lack and it was beginning to fall off after we had that three week hiatus from the show. It's just, it, it started getting boring to me after that. And and then, you know what I'm saying? You got, it became more about Erica Mena and I don't even like that bitch and I don't care nothing about her storyline. So let's just get into it. I'm just going to get some of the bullshit on out the way. Erica Jean and Saigon decides that they're going to move in together. And quite frankly, you guys, they are. The New York version of Tracy and Drew from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. And they are the brand new gen, gen pen and consequence. I'll be very surprised if Erica Jean and Saigon do not get kicked off the show after this season is over with. Because they really didn't add much to the show. Um, you know, you did get to see Saigon take scenes with the likes of Rich and Peter Guns. But you never really got the chance to see Erica Jean interact with the other females. The only time you really seen her interact with the other females is when Yandy invited her to K. Michelle's party. But other than that though, y'all, if y'all go on VH1.com and look at all the deleted scenes from this season, she takes a bulk of a lot of her scenes besides with besides Saigon, but she also had friendships with Yandy and Tahiri that this that Mona, Scott and the powers that be did not show and I feel like that's really messed up because most of that time that she wasn't on screen, because Erica Jean was absent for for a few for a couple of episodes. So while she was absent, they could have showed us some of her friendships with Tahiri and Yandy. I wanted to see more of that, and I saw more of it in the deleted scenes. Pretty much, Peter Guns goes to Nick Cannon for some advice, and it was very weird to see that. Like I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? That was the most random shit in the world, but okay. And him and Amina decides that they're going to work things out. And they're going to be husband and wife for real. He's promising to do right by her. And her dumb ass believes it. So we're going to so we're gonna see what, how that goes. And I'm pretty sure that Peter Guns and Amina will be back next season. I can see them being back long before Erica Jean and Cy Gunn. Um, Tahiri and Rashida, they got into it again. Um, to be quite honest, you guys, I don't give two right fucks, you know what I'm saying? I didn't like Tahiri last season, however, she's okay this season. I did not hate her too much this season. She's very much likable this season. However, Miss um, Summerine Sandwich um, Ali, a.k.a. Rashida, I would never like that bulldog looking ass bitch. Why? Because her candy corn wig wearing ass get on my nerves. I mean, she always trying to throw shade at somebody. And she can't have a decent conversation. She's just thirsty for airtime. And that's just how I feel. And who needs friends like her? Who needs enemies when you got friends like Rashida Ali? First of all, if I had an argument with my motherfucking friend, all that negative ass bullshit that she spouted at Tahiri never would have came out of my mouth. First of all, if we were real friends. This bitch dissed her for the, the work that she does for Urban Magazines. I mean, aren't you so-called good friends with Erica Mena? That bitch got her start in music videos and urban magazines as well. So why the fuck are you going in on Tahiri about it? And not to mention, Tahiri is taking this love and hip-hop platform and she's doing other things with it. Tahiri just opened up a restaurant in New York City. What are you doing, Rashida, besides your failed clothing stores and your, kept in your credit cards, um... Your credit card scams. What the fuck else are you doing, bitch? Why you sitting up here talking about? And 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 another thing. Who is this mystery man that you're trying to that you're trying to get married to and that you're trying to get a wedding special centered around? Who the fuck is it? Cause I don't know nobody named right now want to marry your motherfucking cotton, fucking candy corn wig wearing ass 
fuck Rashida because the way she tried to do to her killed me. Not to mention, not only did she take a jab at the work that she does, but she also took a jab at what kind of car she dropped, the apartment that she lived in, how much money she got, her messing around with a crack addict, aka Joe Button. I just felt like she was doing the most and she was doing too motherfucking much. And that's why I don't I don't respect bitches like Rashida. I don't respect bitches like that because if you gotta go in on somebody that's supposed to be your friend, that motherfucking heart, that means you was never a friend to begin with, and you've always been hating on that bitch. And just like Tahiri said, that 60 day challenge ain't working for you. Bitch, you wanna talk about somebody being classy, but motherfucking bitch, you are a motherfucking thief and a credit card scammer. That's what the fuck you are. And not to mention, are you mad because Tahiri got a nice built ass body and you got the motherfucking bumper to bumper dicks in your ass? Bitch, have a seat. You can't even get a nice looking wig, right? I mean, really. Look at, I mean, your hair looks like cantaloupes. Like, bitch, sit the fuck down somewhere. Like, I really can't stand Rashida. She don't need to come back to Love and Hip Hop next season, period, because she was barely here to begin with. But she was all up Erica ass the whole damn summer trying to diss K. Michelle. Not to mention, she was trying to start a Twitter beef with K. Michelle and shit because she ain't had shit else to do over a motherfucking hairstyle. Bitch, have a seat. You are the wickedest link. You are the lamest bitch. And to think that some people be trying to diss K. Michelle at the expense of Rashida Ali and Erica. Erica Mena. I just can't stand people like that. Like, really? But anyway. Getting into Peter... Not Peter Guns. Erica and Sin and Rich. I'm so over this whole little um, triangle. And I haven't seen any Love & Hip Hop reviews yet as I, re as I record this. But the only thing I'm going to say about this, about this bullshit is this. Erica is the cause of all of this shit. And I know a lot of y'all was going in on Rich on Twitter and everything else. And I'm pretty sure that, you know, people that's doing love and hip hop reviews on this very show, on this very episode, is probably going to go in on Rich. But I think I'm in a minority when I say that I'm on Rich's side. Granted, Rich isn't handling the, isn't handling the shit as a gentleman, he's not bowing out gracefully like a real man would. He's lashing out like a bitch. However, at the same in the same breath, Erica was the one who created this monster. You know this man was in love with you, and every chance you every chance you got, you hopped on his lap. Every chance you got, you was fucking him again. Every fucking chance you fucking got. And everybody wanna get mad or rich because of how he feeling. No, Erica was playing with his feelings and she was playing with Sin feelings. And as much as I don't give a fuck about Sin, Sin had every right to go the fuck off on her. She had every motherfucking right because she was playing her for Rich. Somebody that she claims that she didn't want to work with. And then when Rich told Sin that he fucked Erica, Erica wanted to say, you just mad because her pussy bigger than your dick. Bitch, she wasn't thinking about how little his dick was when you was on it. You had no, you, I mean, really, you wasn't talking about it then. You obviously fucked him again. You didn't give a fuck how small his dick was. You were still on it and you were still fucking it. So it really don't matter. Erica is very confused. She don't know what the fuck she want. But Rich looking like the bad guy. The only reason why he looking like the bad guy is because of the way he's handling the situation. But all of this is Erica Mendel's fault because she don't know what she wanted. She was going from dick to pussy. She didn't know what the fuck she wanted. And at the end of the day, I think that both Rich and Sin both need to leave that bitch alone because she's really not worth it at all. Erica ain't worth it, period. She ain't nothing but a slut bucket ass bitch. And she she just not worth it to me. Period. And I'm just going to close this out with something more positive. K. Michelle, Tara, and Yandy. The three people that I like the most of this whole damn show. First of all, it's nice to see Tara in a better place. You can tell that Tara is in a much better place than she was in when, it's, when the season first began. She's in a much better place. Yandy is still longer for Mendeecees to come home. She wants her family back and everything like that. But she knows she's trying to push on and do what she got to do. K. Michelle, on the other hand, she's doing tours and she's got her music career on track and she's the only person I've loved in hip hop that made something out of herself. Like she took this platform and she made it to something that she wanted to do for the past four years and that's drop an album and reconnect with her fans and that's what the fuck she did. They also played Can't Raise a Man throughout the ending of the show and I honestly think that that was the most appropriate song to play because all these women... um. Tahiri, Tyra, Amina, and Erica Jean, all, most of these, even Erica Mena, most of these women on this show was trying to raise a man. 
And what better way to end a season with all the foolishness that this woman that these women has portrayed and all the foolishness that they went through? What better song to play at the very end of the show than Can't Raise a Man? It's pretty much the gospel truth to every woman on the show. You can't fucking raise a man. That's what a lot of them try to do. And you know it is what it is. But only thing I can say is the finale really wasn't all that to me. It was on the same wavelength as last season's finale. It wasn't really all that, but it really wasn't that bad either. But it wasn't all that for me to be talking about it for 10 minutes. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, that's all I got to say about my um, about Love and Hip Hop New York. Can't wait for the reunion. And I also can't wait to Best Girl Wives LA. That's what I'm waiting on. So, um, be sure to follow me on Twitter. At Mr. Underscore Still Standing Without the G. Follow me on Instagram at Rebellious Underscore Scotty. And make sure y'all follow my fan page at Team Scotty on Facebook. Go on Facebook and just type in Team Scotty and it should pop up. For the last few days, my like count has been spiking up. And I am so happy about that. It took y'all long enough to do it. So go ahead and like my Facebook fan page if y'all haven't already. And I'm out of here, you guys. Peace.